This afternoon we are going to talk about uh, four elements in the discourse you can see uh, the further monks uh, monk reviews this very body however it may be posted on disposed or disposed only in terms of the elements there are in this body the earth element what the water element the fire element the air element just as a skilled butcher or his apprentice having slaughtered a cow were to sit in the crossroad with the carcass divided into portions Furthermore, monks, the uh, monk reviews this very body, however it may be called posture, postured, postured or disposed, only in terms of the elements. In this section, um, this is a very short section, not very much uh, is uh, discussed. But this is very important uh, section uh, preceded by the 32 parts of the body. The 32 parts you have already seen are divided into uh, six groups four belong to the earth element and uh, two groups belong to water elements but here two more elements are added that is uh, fire element and heat element in the 32 parts we can focus uh, the mind on various uh, various parts when we come to the elements uh, it is not very easy to identify the elements in the body although four elements are there uh, when we divide uh, the, the body into four elements uh, how are we going to divide it you, we cannot separate earth element from the body water element air element and heat element we cannot separate they all are together with the body when we say body all the four elements are there however Buddha said a meditator, meditating monk or person who, who meditates and mentally, he did not say mentally but we have to, we assume that we uh, have to do it mentally otherwise we have no way to <laughs> separate these elements in our body so mentally we separate these elements and put into four uh, groups four elements, earth element and so forth. Now, when the elements are separated, what we find is not a particular a person or being, but just elements. The simile given here is just like a butcher, butchers uh, a cow and uh, cut it up 
into four parts and uh, sitting in a cross rod keeping these four parts of uh, the animal. Now when he uh, leads the animal to uh, abattoir or place where he wants to butcher the animal, he knows this is such and such an animal, a cow. Also when he slaughters the animal, he knows that this is a cow. Once he has uh, slaughtered the animal, what he sees is not the animal, but just beef. We don't, he may not call that he was selling cow. He is selling beef. Sometimes people who don't know how to use words may say cow. I remember once I was in Sweden, uh, three high school girls, uh, Muslim girls, uh, came to drive me to high school to give a talk. And uh, one girl was very smart and she began to ask me all kinds of questions. She asked me, do you eat pigs? She asked me. <laughs> I said, no, I don't. <laughs> and do you? I asked her, do you? <laughs> she said, I eat, eat anything. <laughs> because now she is not in a Muslim country. <laughs> so she did not know the word for flesh of a pig. Instead of pork, she asked me whether I eat pigs. <laughs> Similarly, somebody who uh, does not know the word, correct word to ask, might ask, do you eat uh, cow? So this, when this man is selling uh, the flesh of the cow that he butchered, he would not have the concept of cow, he would have the concept of meat or beef. And similarly, when we mentally dissect our own body, we don't try to dissect others' bodies. As I mentioned repeatedly, we always have to mentally dissect our own body. And that may also sound very uh, uh, unpleasant, but uh, we always have to keep in mind that we are practicing mindfulness. In the mindfulness practice, there is no pleasantness or unpleasantness. In mindfulness practice, elements are elements. Elements don't have anything pleasant or unpleasant. Earth element is earth element. Water element is water element and so forth. So, how can we use these elements as objects of meditation? What should we do to make them a meaningful objects of meditation? Earth element is inseparable from the body on the one hand. On the other hand, it occupies the, I think the, the major part of our body. I don't know exact percentage, but uh, uh, when we perceive a body, what we perceive is the physical body. The physical body is the body of apparently earth element. What we have to uh, do is to see the characteristics of earth element. Earth element is the element which has, which is hard or soft, which occupies space, which can expand and contract which is visible, tangible, perceptible, which manifests 
in various shapes and sizes and colors. All these we find in earth element. Now, uh, Buddha said this earth element, whether it is internal or external, it is earth element. What we see outside, as we call earth, seems to be occupying at least uh, uh, one third of the whole globe. On the other hand, when we very uh, closely try to examine the earth element, it is invisible. What can we point out this is earth element? is not something that we can see or perceive. All we know is that there is hardness, softness, extension and so forth. But on the one hand it is invisible, on the other hand it occupies one third of the globe. Similarly, this body, in this body there is earth element if you take, we will try to sep take earth element from this body, you cannot separate it because whenever you take a part of the body, you, that, that part has heat, water, air and earth. All they come together. But Normally, uh, uh, people think uh, uh, when the body is uh, strong or healthy or uh, uh, big or and so forth, they take uh, great uh, pride in it because the, that is what uh, uh, the, because they they think it is something that they can uh, uh, maintain. There is another discourse in first discourse on Madhya, in Madhya Nikaya <laughs> that is very important to remember. That is called uh, the root of uh, all existence. Discourse on the root of all existence, Mula Pariyaya. In that discourse, Buddha said ordinary uneducated person. This meditation is very important for average ordinary uneducated person. Uneducated means the one who does not know the Dhamma. The Four Noble Truth, Noble Eightfold Path. One does not, the one who does not know these things properly well uh, is called uneducated Putujjana. And ordinary, that is the, the largest majority of the people in the whole world are uh, Putujjanas. And when they, when they see the earth element, they see earth, earth element and uh, identify, recognize earth element as, as, as earth element. Buddha said, Pataving Manyati. Pataving Manyati. They recognize, see, understand uh, earth element as earth element. What do they understand, recognize as, uh, earth, as earth element? Is the hardness or softness, size, color, shape, and so forth of an object. In this case, of one's own body. And that person does not stop there. Then the person thinks, I am in earth element. Pataving manyati. Pataviya manyati. We conceive oneself in the earth element. Or 
Patavi Tomanyati, he conceives himself separate from earth element. In that case, separate from earth element means he has soul or self which is not in the earth element, separate from earth element. Pataving manyati, pataviya manyati, patavito manyati, pataving abhinandati. And seeing this earth element in this way, this person would be delighted in the earth, earth element. So, when we mindfully meditate, when we see earth element, we separate from the rest of the element mentally, and there we do not try to identify earth element with self, we do not try to think earth element is separate from self, or self is in earth element. Uh, or earth element and self are identical and so forth. But we must recognize earth element is earth element. Having recognized earth element as earth element, what we should do? We mentally we, we recognize this earth, uh, earth element no matter how big it is, how strong it is, how colorful it is, how powerful it is, it is subject to impermanence. It is changing. For instance, we know sometimes people, you know, the people show the, the strength, physical strength through the earth element. And this physical strength that people exhibit through the earth element is not something permanent. It is impermanent, it is changing. So, Buddha said that on the one hand we use earth element to understand impermanence. On the other hand he said use earth element as an object to meditate so that you will be as firm as earth. So you will be very firm, firm in your determination in uh, pursuing the practice of your mindfulness. So, Buddha gave a discourse to Venerable uh, uh, Rahula in Maharahula Vada Sutta. Uh, he said, Rahula, meditate like earth element. Meditate earth as water element, fire element, air element. Venerable Rahula said, okay, yes sir. Then uh, Buddha did not explain it, he went to Sariputta. Uh, then uh, Venerable Sariputta explained to him how to meditate, how to use earth as an object and meditate like earth element. He said, this earth is, uh, uh, earth is called uh, Patavi and also uh, Dharani uh, because it upholds everything in it. You dig it, you uh, dynamite, you throw dirty things, ugly things, beautiful things, and you do all kind of this, things to the earth, but you and yet earth will not disappear. Earth will tolerate all this. Similarly, Buddha said, meditate like earth element meaning don't budge don't give up don't let anything discourage your practice stay firm steady and practice your 
vegetation. So, we can use earth element in two ways. One to see uh, impermanence in our body, no matter how strong we are, because of the presence of earth element, we become weak. And that is why Buddha said this body is subject to sickness, old age, death, in spite of the strong earth element, earth element is impermanent. On the other hand, use earth element to make our commitment strong, determination and uh, make uh, have a strong willpower to continue the practice. When we say this, sometimes people ask, uh, well, what is willpower? Uh, is it, uh, they always try to associate with the soul or self, if there is no soul or self. Uh, if everything is impermanent, what is willpower? Willpower is uh, uh, the strong, wholesome desire. Whole, strong, wholesome desire is what we call willpower. There will be unwholesome desire as well. Uh, which is uh, which also may have uh, uh, power, but it does not have as much strength as uh, wholesome desire, because wholesome desire has to work very, st very uh, strongly to combat, to overcome unwholesome desire. So, uh, make wholesome desire strong and firm and uh, powerful in order to continue the practice just like earth. All this we can, we do not find in one place, but implications of the, of the subject of meditating like earth element is that, that is we have to make a commitment not to give up. And the second is water element in the 32 parts of the body we have we already saw 12 parts belonging to water elements. And when we separate them mentally we can see the water element also uh, inseparable in reality because uh, even in the water element there is earth element, air element and fire element. So, and yet, we can uh, identify it in to some extent that which uh, uh, holds things together, that which uh, is liquid and so forth. We roughly since the uh, earth element is predominant in that particular uh, substance, we call it, uh, we, we call it earth element, but generally we cannot literally separate completely earth what you call water element from other elements. You take for instance um, uh, saliva, blood and so forth in there you can find earth element as well. Anyway, Buddha said meditate like earth element. He said earth element uh, what you call meditate like water element. Water element whether it is internal or external is just water element. Externally, there is a large uh, quantity of or volume of water, maybe two thirds of the whole globe is water. Large percentage of our body also is water, I do not know exact percentage, 
but there is no difference Buddha said between the external water element and internal water element. When external water element is uh, disturbed there will be lot of uh, uh, problems. Internal when internal water element is disturbed there will be lot of uh, problems. But internal earth element also is subject to change and we cannot identify ourselves with internal earth element or external earth element. In the Maha, in the Mula Pariyaya Sutta again Buddha said uh, somebody who will identify uh, who, will, who may uh, know earth element as earth as what you call water element as water element and then one may think that uh, water uh, one is in water element that means one self is in water element or one self is separate from water element or one self is identified with water element and one would be delighted with earth element what you call water element and so forth. In this case one would think one's own self is in the earth element and so forth. But Buddha said uh, when you use earth what you call water element to uh, as an object of meditation look at the water element just like other elements uh, and you will see water element also is subject to change it is impermanent. On the other hand Buddha when he gave the when Venerable Sariputta explained the meaning of how to meditate uh, uh, on water element when he explained it to Venerable Rahula he said just like this water uh, you cannot completely destroy it continues to run it does its own thing he said <coughs> suppose somebody brings a torch and tries to uh, evaporate water in the river Ganges he cannot do that because river Ganges you may not have seen river Ganges all of you perhaps you might have seen Mississippi you cannot evaporate it by using a torch because the volume is so large similarly once you start your meditation practice no matter how much obstacles you encounter you don't give up just like the river water runs in spite of all these obstacles when you start meditation continue meditating in spite of all these obstacles. On the one hand it is impermanent, on the other hand it is so firm. So Buddha said or Venerable Sariputta said you continue meditating like water element. Then we have fire element, fire element is the element uh, of uh, heat or radiation uh, which is not mentioned in the 32 parts of the body. Uh, fire element is the, the fun we can uh, use the fire element by uh, recollecting, remembering, knowing its characteristics. We feel the fire element when the when you feel the heat that is one characteristic, one aspect of fire elements. Fire elements digest our food, fire elements makes the body grow uh, and fire elements create burning sensation. These are the characteristic, characteristics of fire elements. And they, all these characteristics indicate even the fire element is impermanent. So 
use the fire element as an object of impermanent object of meditation and see impermanence of fire elements. On the other hand, use fire elements uh, to see its uh, strength and power. Once fire start burning, it goes on burning until it burns the object to ashes. Similarly, when you start practicing meditation, meditate like fire, burning all the impurities. You know there is a, uh, there are several discourses uh, Buddha delivered on fire. They are called fire sermons. One is short fire sermon, other is uh, long fire sermon. Long fire sermon you can read in our Vandana book. And there he said, uh, because uh, chakkung adittang, rupe adittang, chakku vinyanang adittang, chakku sampasu aditto. Jadidan chakku sampasu pachya upajati veditan sukhangwa dukhangwa tampi adittang. Kena adittang ragagina dosagina mohagina. Jatya, Jarai, Marne, Soke, Pardevi, Dukhe, Domana, Se, Upaya, Se, Aditya. <laughs> because <coughs> eyes are on fire, visual objects are on fire. Con uh, contact that arises through the eyes and visual objects are on fire. Feeling that arises because of the contact are on fire. Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral feeling that arise through the contact are on fire. What kind of fire? Fire of greed, hatred and delusion. Fire of birth, growth, decay, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair. So all these are on fire. So when we use the fire as an object of meditation or as a symbol of meditation, as a simile of meditation, we got to look at the way how these things burn our life. We are bur we our senses are burned through. He, uh, he, uh, greed, hatred, delusion, and so forth. So, <coughs> meditate like fire to counter this uh, burning uh, function or uh, burning defilements, to overcome those defilements, we go to meditate. We go to meditate to overcome the fire, that means to put out the fire. In this case, <coughs> we want to put out the fire of greed, fire of hatred, fire of delusion, fire of growth, decay, lamentation and so forth. We cannot stop fire of growth, decay, lamentation and so forth very quickly without destroying the fire of greed, hatred and delusion. Only when we overcome and destroy, put out greed, hatred and delusion, we can overcome growth, decay, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair. So that is how we had to use the fire as an object of meditation. That means uh, since we know this fire destroy our wholesome mental states, <coughs> we had to cultivate uh, the, the opposite of it to calm the fire. <coughs> put out the fire 
cultivate tranquility, peace, and get uh, try to cultivate uh, the thought of uh, letting go of greed, letting go of hatred, letting go of delusion. That is how we have to use the the counter uh, objects to overcome the fire of uh, this burning fire. And then use the fire as uh, power uh, of meditation. That means when we cultivate the cultivate wisdom, it is like fire. Wisdom, insight, mindfulness can destroy greed, hatred and delusion. Just like fire destroy its objects. Then we have uh, air element. Also we uh, try to separate mentally the air element in our body from the body. Air element is the is also uh, in a way in, inseparable and yet we can find the characteristics of air elements which has six characteristics, six parts. That is inhaling, exhaling, one, then uh, air that comes out as uh, belching, that is one, and air that goes through the as gas we pass, that is air element, and air that moves in our intestines, uh, we can sometimes experience it very clearly. And the air that moves in our various parts of the body, within, between every cell there is a certain amount of air. And all this is called air element. It occupies the entire body. Every tiny little space is occupied by air. So Buddha said air it, within the body is the same as air outside. Inside air element is the same as outside air elements. When outside air element is disturbed, that is by uh, strong wind, when strong wind blows, it can destroy large amount of areas, properties, houses and so forth. Similarly, when internal air is disturbed, it can cause lot of aches and pains in our body. At the same time, <coughs> air element is uh, as impermanent as other elements. Also air element is as powerful as other elements. And uh, when we uh, separate them, we can see air element is not something permanent. It is changing all the time constantly like everything else. For example, when we breathe in and out, we can notice <coughs> how fast, how cons consistently air element is changing. So, when this is how we have to separate the, the four elements and put into four categories, and then when we meditate on each of them separately, we do not see a being there, a person there, a soul or self. That is, just like when uh, the butcher cut up 
a cow after butchering and starts selling meat, he would have a different name, not uh, the cow. Similarly, when we, when all the elements are together, we have aggregates, form, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness. And we call that uh, a person, a man, woman, boy, girl, cow, pigs and so forth and so on. But when we mentally dissect them, and look at each part separately, we do not see uh, a being in it, being in these parts. We all we see only uh, only parts, elements, and each of them, when we mentally, mindfully focus our mind on each of them, we can see each of them is changing. Each of them is impermanent. And there, we do not see one single permanent eternal entity. The purpose of this meditation and the previous one, as I mentioned, previous uh, 32 parts of the body, we meditate in order to uh, balance our emotions, not to fall into greed or hatred. But to maintain our equanimity, look at various parts of the body exactly as they are, just like a scientist or researcher, uh, researcher would look at certain objects through microscope. We look at these parts. The purpose of looking at them impartially with the equanimous state of mind is to get rid of our delusion. Delusion always refers to the belief in self, existence of personal self. This is called sometimes personality view. It's called personality view because there is uh, 20 types of views with regard to our personality. These are called Vinsati with the Sakkaditi. That is generally ordinarily people believe that there is permanent eternal self existing within ourselves. As I said the other day, that self is the creation of greed and hate, uh, ignorance, the baby of greed and ignorance. But when we mindfully watch each part of our body, either under the, in the category of 32 parts or in these four categories called elements, mindfully dissecting the body into these parts and paying total mindful attention to each of them, we see all of them in a state of flux, changing, disappearing, and we will never find any permanent eternal entity. In order to see that, we use this meditation. And if we, if we, mind, if we merit, use these parts unmindfully, then we will fall into emotional categories, in, in kind of emotions. Either we become attached to the body or we begin to hate. Just like I mentioned yesterday, two stories. One story is to illustrate how somebody becomes uh, attached to the body, that like Sariputta's disciple, because he was unmindfully using the body. And the other is uh, 
the story of those 60 monks who committed suicide because they practice, they used 32 parts of the body unmindfully. They meditated unmindfully. So, uh, when we use them and um, meditate uh, on them mindfully, we do not fall into uh, one extreme of emotion or another extreme of emotions, but we remain equanimous and see the non-existence of self. The purpose of this meditation is to see the non-existence of self. And at the end of the end of this section also we see Atikayoti Vapanasa Sati Pachu Patita Hoti Yava Deva Jnana Mattaya Pati Sati Mattaya Anisito Chavirati Natakinchuloki Upadiyati. First, before that, we have uh, another section say, iti ajyattanga kaya kaya nupasi verati. That means uh, one becomes uh, mindful of the body internally, mindful of the body externally. That means one would dissect the body into four parts, one's own body, one would dissect one's own body and look at these parts mindfully and gain this knowledge and awareness of impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and selflessness. With that understanding, with that awareness and knowledge, one can, you, one can reflect on any other or all other living beings and realize that they too are impermanent, unsatisfactory and selfless. And then realizes this body, these third, the, the, uh, four parts or four elements exist for me to gain knowledge and awareness of impermanence. These elements exist for me to gain knowledge and awareness of impermanence unsatisfactoriness and selflessness. Where else and how else can we know impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and selflessness? There has to be objects. The object of our impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and selflessness are in this case these four elements. I think this is enough for uh, talk. And perhaps uh, tonight we have questions. Uh, you may write your questions and put in the box, and we try to answer this evening.